The Nordic countries, including Norway, regularly rank among the world's happiest nations. But why are they so happy? Today, I will talk to Dr. Ranhild Bangnes, a research professor at the Norwegian Institute of Public Health and at the University of Oslo about Norwegian happiness. She has been researching happiness for two decades and wrote a book titled The Happiness Cure, which came out last year. Dr. Ness, welcome to the program and thanks for joining me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for inviting. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So the first question that I want to ask you is, how did you get into the field of this happiness research? What's the backstory? <laughs> oh, well, that was quite um, a coincidence, more or less. I was uh, working as a psychologist and uh, in the National Hospital. I'm mostly interested in memory and uh, learning processes. Uh, and then I had this... Um, four-year position and it sort of ended and the only job I got was as a happiness researcher <laughs> <laughs> okay well actually I, I was very curious about um um doing research I really wanted to I enjoyed clinical work but I was um, very inclined to to do research and um this position came up at the Norwegian Institute of Public Health and um and it was focusing on uh, studying the genetic and environmental influences on on well-being and ill-being actually mm. so it was uh, perfect so i started and uh, and uh, became a happiness researcher <laughs> okay okay yeah thanks so uh the the nordic countries as i said they mm -hmm. regularly rank among the world's happiest mm. nations especially in the mm. world happiness report so i want to know about your country norway so why do you think mm -hmm. norway comes up at the top or near the top consistently on the happiness index i'm not sure we are sort of the most joyful but we have a smaller proportion of the population really struggling um with compromised uh, mental health and compromised well-being um i think the nordic countries and also norway delivers well in terms of uh people's most people's you know needs you know and uh, you know to live um dignified good lives you know with opportunities um it's safe countries uh, characterized by you know redistribution of wealth with access to free or mostly free healthcare, education, um, modest level of uh, corruption, uh, access to, to good quality work. So I think it's, uh, you know, those factors are very, very important, the structural factors, you know, good governance and, and um, um, you know, fairly uh, good distribution of, of income and opportunities. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand. So I think, as you said, so it's mostly about the strong social safety net in the Nordic countries, including Norway, and the welfare I state. Important. So I think mm -hmm. they play a very big role in why mm -hmm. people become mm -hmm. so happy. Because if you are in trouble in one of the Nordic countries, then the government is there to help you. You can get social yeah. services, you can get social assistance. Mm -hmm. But in many mm -hmm. other countries, mm -hmm. you do not have these benefits, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. It's impossible to to be happy or, or satisfied if you live with fear, you know, or not know where your next meal will come from. And uh, uh, so I think this is very, very important, at least to to um, maybe it doesn't make you sort of super happy all the time, but it takes away a lot of these um, what is robbing you of happiness or, you know, these worries. Mm. Mm, I understand. Thanks. Uh, what role do the concepts, there are two concepts, the Norwegian word, I don't know if I can pronounce them correctly, so please correct me if I'm mistaken. <laughs> so it's Friluts Liv. Yeah, Friluts okay. Liv. <laughs> and the next one is Kusli. Is it Kusli? Kusli. Okay, <laughs> Kusli. So what do the, these two <laughs> concepts, uh, what are their roles in the Norwegian happiness? What do you think? Oh, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. I guess Friluts Liv is about outdoor activities. Mm. Uh, you know, being out there in nature and um, making fire in the woods and uh, <laughs> and going skiing and uh, sleeping in tents and hammocks in the summer as well as the winter, you know. And I think to a lot of people that's very important. I think it became more important to more people during the pandemic where we could not travel and had to use the local areas. And, and we do have a lot of, you know, good access to green nature. 
uh, outdoor activities. Um, so traditionally, I think that's been very, very important. Um, we are sort of hillbillies. <laughs> and much more so than the Swedes and the Danes, you know. I mean, mm. Norwegians are less cultured in a way. I mean, certainly, uh, and um, had, have been, you know, uh, skiing and um, mm. uh, running in the mountains or out with their boats. And, and I think to a lot of people, this is very important. It's a part of our national identity, but but certainly it's a sort of social gradients. And, and uh, you, you know, some people are more into free lifts live than others. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, okay. But I think it's it's what we associate with being Norwegian, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, if you are a Norwegian, millions. you are very familiar with this concept because these are part yeah. of your identity. And yeah, you absolutely. really love to be in the nature, to go outside, you know. And it doesn't matter if even if it's winter, so which is long and dark. Yeah. And, and the roads are filled with snow, but still you will find a way and the motivation to go out. Absolutely. And spend time <laughs> spend time in the nature. Yeah, because I lived in Finland. So Finns are yeah, almost yeah. also like that. So yeah. I know this tendency. And they always say that is there is no bad way, there are only bad clothing. Yeah, so exactly. It's, it's, exactly. It's, a very, it's a very common concept yeah, in the Nordic countries. I think a lot of people would feel a bit shameful almost if they were not, you know, spent the entire day inside i have actually been today and i was thinking oh my god i should i need to get out in the evening and go for a walk because this is really not good <laughs> <laughs> so i think it's a, almost sort of a you know you get this feeling of shame or something is not good if you haven't sort of had a fresh quick mm. walk or some mm. you know cold mm. cold wind in your face hmm. yeah 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 i understand so now there is also a dark side of the Nordic happiness thing because despite their high rankings, research has mm -hmm. shown that there are mental health problems, including loneliness and Definitely. depression in the Nordic yeah. countries and especially among the young people. So I want to know mm -hmm. your opinion on this. What do you think about this, the opposite picture? Um, we certainly do have uh, um, mental health problems. I think that, you know, in terms of uh, diagnosis or diagnostic uh, uh, data. It's, it doesn't vary much from other countries, uh, although we do not really have a national um, diagnosis, I mean, uh, overview um, uh, at the moment. Uh, we do have a lot of registered data indicating that uh, it's like other most other countries. I mean, these conditions, well-being and if being, uh, you know, do have their genetic uh, influences as well, you know, so so um, in all countries, uh, people are exposed to, to depression and worry and anxiety. And there's a lot of uh, um, experiences that we cannot sort of um, hide from or they will sort of uh, affect us all. Um, people break up, get sick, die. Mm. Um, so we do certainly have mental health problems uh, related to, to these matters. We have had uh, an increase uh, for the younger generation. Uh, we have a very uh, skewed distribution of well-being uh, and uh, anxiety, depression over over age. Um, that has actually changed, especially in terms of well-being. In the eighties, it was the younger generation who was, uh, you know, the happiest, and now mm. it's, uh, you know, the happiest are those seventy plus. Yeah, <laughs> it's a quite linear increase in in uh, all aspects of uh, of well-being, whether it's meaning in life, it's uh, belonging to your neighborhood, uh, joy. Um, um, how much is uh, related to? The younger generation now expressing more uh, worry than before, whether it's sort of a cultural thing, whether it is tied to social media use or, um, or whether, you know, what is the reason? We do not know, but we know that uh, all our data show the same. Uh, and it's particularly uh, the self-report data. Mm. Um, and it's uh, it's the young people who are depressed and the young people who are the lonely. And uh, there has been a, a substantial increase. And, and um, during the pandemic, an added uh, increase, I mean, on top of a longer term, um, slow um, uh, increase, um, especially among uh, girls uh, and especially for depressive uh, problems um, and also yeah, and loneliness. Um, so there might certainly be uh, be aspects of uh, its society or youth culture, uh, the world situation. Um, there seems to be uh, a decline in um, 
in future, you know, optimism about the future in terms of, uh, you know, uh, optimism about having a happy life, but also about uh, access to work, uh, fi finances, about climate. Uh, and it seems that declining happiness level in the population is partly related to younger people, at least below 40, um, being more concerned about the future. Mm, yeah, so I think it's mostly about because young people have a lot to worry about because they are not still settled yeah. in life. So mm -hmm. they have to worry about, mm -hmm. you know, employment jobs or maybe the relationships. So what are they going to do in the future in their mm -hmm. lives? So these and thoughts maybe, are always... Mm. I was talking to a, a Polish colleague uh, last week and, mm -hmm. and I was uh, telling him that, you know, I've, I've so many journalists calling these uh, last days asking about Christmas and saying, you know, that people are so concerned about Christmas and they are worried and they are not looking forward to it. And he was very surprised and wondering why. And, and I started talking about, you know, it's a, it's war, it's climate problems, it's uh, inequality, mm. it's uh, the prices of electricity and food have sort of um, uh increased a lot people are worried about their finances and and of course it's much worse in poland uh, mm. inflation rate is twice as high and and uh, he was uh, he was so surprised and and we started talking about it's it's something about have, having been on a sort of um um uh, long positive ride you know also and the expectations you have and uh, and maybe it's you know particularly difficult now for for Norwegian and and also young people to to sort of uh, uh, face a very different future because I mean it is a changing future yeah yeah changing future and there are lots of uncertainties involved as well yeah. you know, especially in the face of the Russia Ukraine war you know yeah things and, have, and things Norwegians have, changed a lot. have not been have maybe not um, we've had a very um safe and long positive developments even the you know financial crisis didn't affect affect us that much uh, so um so that could also be a factor um mm. of influence to to you know the young people's mental health mm. Mm. now let's talk about your research so you have done lots <laughs> of research on the genetic influence of Li oh, on yeah. life satisfaction or well-being so tell mm -hmm. us the role of genes in well-being what what's the role yeah um still i don't think we know how much you know genetics means to you or me to to us as individuals and it could vary across individuals but we do know that for most human characteristics, perhaps even all uh, genetics are important or they are, you know, genetic differences are, are involved in, in differences in well-being and mental health. And, uh, but we are certainly not determined by genes. I mean, the, the whole history of evolution and, you know, humankind's history, uh, is, uh, is about changing to, you know, adapt to, to changing circumstances. Um, but, uh, we do tend to say that about 30 to 40 percent of the variation in well-being uh, is down to, to genetic differences. Uh, but that could also vary across different um, subgroups, for example. Uh, so there's no heritability for well-being as such. It, it, it's always, you know, context dependent. But we do find that uh, there seems to be quite a stability to people. Um, some people are happy at work and they are quite, you know, positive and happy where at the senior center or the, the gym or in when they are in the shop or at home, you know. So people seem to be quite stable in their mood. So this kind of uh, stability or, you know, optimism or positivity orientation, if we would call it that, uh, seems to be quite genetic. So the stability, which is almost like a sort of personality type uh, <laughs> uh, um, well-being, uh, we find it's sort of 80% um, uh, down to genetics. But certainly um, what is causing change and fluctuations in our, in our well-being is uh, it's related to the environment. Oh. So, so it, it is certainly a factor. Uh, we vary, and I think... Um, I think maybe the you know core conclusion of the most you know basic uh, um, implication of behavior genetic findings for for happiness is that we are actually different and, and there's no happiness cure that suits all of us. Um, we are different. 
Okay. Okay. So uh, the, the, the difference in genes and genetic difference, yeah. so it, it still plays a role in how happy Absolutely. you can be. Mm. Okay. So, and, and hmm. yeah, and, and um, it affects how we, we meet the environment also, you know, or, or interpret the, our context. So, um, yeah, so certainly it's a, it's a major fact. I mean, if we look at uh, demographic factors, it hmm. tends to explain maybe five to 10, maximum 15% of the variation between people, but, but genetics, you know, explain 40%. So it's, uh, it's certainly an important uh, factor, but uh, we are not, not in any way determined by our genes.